The Boston Celtics are headed to the NBA Finals. I'm your boy, Pee Wee The Plug. This is NBA Weekly. I got the game still fresh on the TV. The Boston Celtics right now are in Miami in the 305. They're on the, the middle of the Heat's home court celebrating right now in real time. Um, incredible Game 7. I, I I don't even know where to begin. This is everything that you asked for, especially the last two minutes of the game when Miami made that final late comeback. Um, ton of emotions as a fan and as a viewer down the stretch with about, what, 21 seconds left. They're making a run. Down five. Max Schroes hits the big three. They're down two. And it's like a movie. Um, you know, I think Marcus Smart at the, the to end the Celtics possession, he gets to the rim, he misses. Um, they are pushing it in transition. Jimmy Butler um now has the ball. And in a in this, I know I know hindsight is 2020. Hindsight is always 2020. It's always easy for guys like me, you. Um, at home on the couch watching the game it's always easy for us to say which they should have done or what I really 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 would have loved to have seen Jimmy Butler push that basketball to the rim and attack Al Horford while he's backpedaling on his heels because there's no way in transition head full of steam coming downhill there's no way that Al Horford can keep up with Jimmy Butler in that situation in my personal opinion and I would have put the referees and Al Horford in a position to basically have to foul or allow me to get my two. And the way Jimmy Butler has scored at the rim, all series, all playoffs, I like him in that position versus the pull-up three. I'm not a fan of Jimmy Butler in any circumstance taking a pull-up three over attacking downhill at a slow, slower foot defender like Al Horford. Um, and, and that was basically the game. Huge guts for Jimmy Butler to take that type of shot. Um, everything on the line. We're either winning it or we're going home. We're, I'm living and dying with myself taking the shot. I, I, I tip my hat off to him for the guts and the courage. But I still uh, would have preferred him to attack the basket and that bang-bang play. I have to start with that because that was like the height of emotions as a fan. We're all at home watching the game. And this is everything coming together. It felt like the Celtics had the game with about 2.30 left to go. The next thing you know, shots start falling for the Miami Heat. The, they're getting stops on the opposite end. You got Marcus Smart chucking up threes. You got Jalen Brown offensive foul. I think Tatum had an offensive foul. A lot of stuff started lining up. Um, for the Miami Heat to have some miracle, magical run to either send this game into overtime or Jimmy Butler hitting that shot and they have the one-point lead to uh, you know, potentially go to the NBA Finals. But the game overall, for it to be game seven, for you to have fought so hard in Boston to send this to a seven-game series back to your home court, I must say, me personally, I'm, I'm a little disappointed with how Miami played this this pretty much entire game especially the beginning of it um obviously they played phenomenal down the stretch in the last two or three minutes to really have that late game push to potentially win it with a jimmy butler transition three but to begin the game they came out really really like relaxed um lackadaisical just no real fight something that's not you know usual for a miami heat type of team if anything you know the heat are going to fight Maybe the jump shots don't fall. Maybe the offense is a bit slow. They can't get nothing going. But as far as just the 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 feel of game seven, I didn't get that from the Miami Heat. It felt from the gate that the Celtics came out um, with, with more of that oomph that, man, this is game seven. We're focused. We're sharp. We're ready. Anything we have to do to win this game, we're going to do it. And they felt like the team that hit first and usually the team that hit first is the team that's going to go off and win it. Um, the three-point shot, again, all series, all playoffs has been something that's a question mark for the Miami Heat. Um, I got them shooting 20% from three, six of 30. Um, a lot better than seven for 45, but I mean, six of 30 is, is really not going to cut it. it, it it's not going to cut it. And again, this is another game where the Celtics shot 34%, which isn't, you know, it isn't anything astronomical, but it's just better then 20%. It's kind of like the 7 for 45 game. I believe that was what, like game five, where the, the Celtics didn't shoot it crazy. They just shot it not as bad as the Heat. The Heat shoot the ball very, very bad. The offense is something that I think has to be addressed this offseason. 
I'm not a guy uh, that believes in panicking when you've made it this far um, in the playoffs. They were a game away from being in the NBA Finals. They have some key pieces and a key good core team, um, but the offense has to be addressed. I, I, I truly believe they need to have Donovan Mitchell written down in their notepad like I'm doing right now, and they need to have his name circled on a whiteboard. In any way that they can get him without giving anything up that's too much, I would exercise every option. Because I truly believe you add an offensive domino piece like Donovan Mitchell on a team with Jimmy Butler, um, led by Jimmy Butler, with Bam Adebayo, um, and even the other glue supporting cast that they have. And this, this, this is a way totally different team. So if you got to package up Tyler Hero in a sign and trade, you got to throw Duncan Robinson in there, or maybe a pick first round pick or something you do that for donovan mitchell because one thing i saw from the miami heat jimmy butler as a leader jimmy butler as a leader can get the job done but he is going to need help he is going to need help jimmy butler gained a lot of respect for me this entire year um this entire playoffs as one of those guys he's not always going to have the sexy uh regular season numbers he's probably not going to be in the mvp conversation dropping 40 here dropping 30 here but when the lights are bright and when the money is on the line, Jimmy Butler is a bona fide, for sure guy that's going to give you everything he has in his tank in any way to win the basketball game. And I think if you have a Jimmy Butler led team with another offensive firepower guy like Donovan Mitchell and you have such a glue type big and bam out of bio. Um, with the rest of the supporting cast that they have, the Max Struess of the world, the Gabe Vincents, the P.J. Tuckers, um, the Kyle Lowry's even, you can, you can be back here next year. You can be back here next year. But they're going to need another consistent threat. And I, I, I like Tyler Hero. He's had a phenomenal year. But he's not a Donovan Mitchell. He is not a Donovan Mitchell. So I want to see the Heat make some type of move. Again, not a guy for panicking. I'm not saying they need to readjust this whole team. They had a phenomenal year, phenomenal playoff. This was a phenomenal series. They they went through a lot. Both teams went through a lot. We're going to talk about the Celtics in a second. But the Miami Heat had a hell of a year, and I would love to see them make a Donovan Mitchell push. I, I really believe that. And Jimmy Butler, I've been a Jimmy Butler doubter, I would say, uh, for a very long time. I, not in the sense of doubting him as a player. He's always had a nice game and had my respect there. But he's just been a weird guy to where do you classify? You know what I mean? How, how is he really one of those top guys? I've always been like, nah, he's cool, but he's not that guy. He is that. He is that. He is that. He don't have a bag. He's not a, he wasn't a McDonald All-American. He's not averaging 30. You know what I mean? He's not a sexy name. He's not Kevin Durant, LeBron, Steph Curry. But boy. When, again, there's not another player that I would want on my team for a game seven type situation. Whatever he need, the team needs, he's going to do. I think Jimmy Butler is a guy that if you needed a rebound, he'd probably have a 17 rebound game. I just think that he needs help offensively because at all, as great of a player that he is and all of the things he can do, I think it's very, very tough to put Jimmy Butler in a situation where night in and night out, you're going into a game and you're saying we need 30 from you. That's never been him. He's always gotten off on being an extremely good two-way player who's going to wheel his way and give you everything he got, whether it's passing, whether it's hitting tough shots, whether it's defending the other team's best player, whether it's being low, vocal, um, you know, rebound, whatever. He's going to be there all night. But being a 30-point scorer or being the go-to guy consistently night in, night out, always having to put up big offensive fight. His game isn't made for that. He's a mid-range guy, doesn't really flourish at the three-point shot. And when you think about all that it takes to guard the other team's best player, to initiate offense sometimes, to hit the glass, and then to create your own shot, um, the twos don't, call, don't, don't count as much as the threes. It's, it's very draining. It's very draining. And certain times in the series, Jimmy Butler ex seemed extremely banged up, extremely exhausted. And in this game seven and early on, it seemed like the Boston Celtics against the Miami Heat. And the more and more you put Jimmy Butler in that situation, the more of these results you're going to get. The more results like that you're going to get. I think you go get somebody like Donovan Mitchell, it allows Jimmy to be who he has to be and who he wants to be. It allows Bam to be who he wants to be and who he has to be. Obviously, we see Bam is not going to be a 25. He had 25, 11, and 4 tonight. Great way to step up, but he's not going to give you that consistently. 
throughout a, he just hasn't shown us that and we have to be able to accept that and say okay bam is just not a 25 a night guy he's not but he's going to defend he gives us switchability he can he uh hand off dribble handoffs initiate offense at times he's what what he brings he's valuable at and we're gonna to have to live with that so i want to see the miami heat try to make some type of move no need to get desperate or anything like that but i definitely think the offensive side of basketball they must improve on boston how great is it for al horford i seen a couple games ago maybe early in the play something i saw somewhere i had no idea al horford is one of the he had one of the the most the most win playoff wins of all time without ever playing in the nba finals i think he had like 140 so for him to be a part of this Celtics team from the early stages when Jason Tatum was a rookie, right? And then that team kind of fell apart. Al Horford value kind of went down when he went out over there in Philadelphia. Um, and they were supposed to have him with Joel. It didn't work. Him, Joel, Ben, it was just a mess. They gave him so much money that when you're not performing or when you don't fit and you're getting high value dollars, that is a recipe for disaster. That is a, that is a career killer. The same thing is like Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is about to make $47 million next year, and he's in a situation that doesn't fit him and has him looking extremely bad. And then when you put on top of it the amount of money you're getting, it's a career killer. Nobody wants to, nobody wants to touch that. John Wall in a situation he's in right now, nobody wants to touch that. And for Al Horford to be in that same situation in Philadelphia, find his way with OKC. They send guys to OKC to, to like clip you like that's done. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it, it only Chris Paul survived that really, if we being honest. Um, but we saw what happened with Melo. That's like a, we, we saw they got Kimba and cut him, let him go to the Knicks. Like that's like it's not good when you end up in OKC as a high valued, high salary player. That's like, oh, he ain't on nothing. They'll take him for a first round pick and just let him chill on their roster. He's barely going to play whatever. He re he really rehabilitated himself, got healthy, found his way back to the Boston Celtics, um, and became one of the most valuable players all playoffs. And this is a team as Jimmy, I mean, um, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Marcus Smart, and right now I'm talking about Al Horford. He's played phenomenal. When you think about the uh, the Brooklyn Nets series, the defense they played, he was a big part of that. The defense with Greek Freak, he was a big part of that. The big time shots he's hit, countless threes and clutch daggers he's hit. He's been phenomenal. So that was great to see the team rush to him uh, when the clock ran out. I was in a party. My homie Kyron was like, man, they running up to Al Ho. You jumping around like he had 40. Like he that guy. And I had to explain to him, this guy has the most wins in playoff history without a finals appearance. It's a big deal. Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum is that guy. Hashtag Deuce Daddy. That's, that's my new thing. Hashtag Deuce Daddy. Jason Tatum is that dude. 26, 10, and 6. I love the evolution that we've been able to see the mature maturity of his game grow. Um, this is a dude who's been a bucket since Chaminade. Um, but to see him in this stage, being a two-way player, leading a team, hitting big shots, allowing the game to come to him, not pressing too much, knowing when to go, when to not go, knowing when to fake a shot, throw it to the corner. Like, that evolution um it's always so special to see to see a guy turning that page into superstardom at an early age this is this is crazy i it was so much talk about could jason tatum and jalen brown coexist and now these guys are headed to the nba finals and the eastern conference game seven jalen brown gives you 24 6 and 6 and jason tatum gives you 26 10 and 6 jason tatum um i'm trying to i'm looking at his profile right now I just want to know for for fact, for fact, I'm fact checking real quick. We on my channel, I like to fact check. Jason Tatum is 24 years old. Turn his his birthday is two days before mine. I'm March 5th. He's March 3rd. So he just turned 24 not too long ago, right? I, that makes me believe Jalen Brown is 25. He came in the year before um, Jason Tatum, I believe. 25 years old. These guys are 25 and 24 wing tandem we see how big and important the wing position has become in today's nba they're headed to the the championship at 24 and 25 and they have guys like marcus smart who is what marcus smart is probably my age 27 28 marcus smart is 28 years old 
It's just scary. It's just scary. I don't know what's going to happen in the NBA Finals. I think the Golden State Warriors are probably going to be the favorites. But when you look at 24 and 25 as your two superstar and star tandem, you look at a supreme glue slash role player, heart and soul, Marcus Smart at 28. And then you look at the Grant Williams of the world, the Robert Williams, the ability to plug in the Al Horfords, the Derek Whites. Um, this is this is this is phenomenal. I love the direction that they're going. I'm so happy that they made the championship over the Heat just because I feel like they're a better matchup uh, for the Golden State Warriors, the defense that they played all playoffs. This is a phenomenal historic run. I, you don't even take in consideration how old they are. You add in the fact that they're ages, right? And then you take the run that they had. They had, I've never seen Kevin Durant play the way he played this year in the playoffs. It's not because Kevin Durant is old. It ain't because Kevin Durant was dealing with an injury. It's because the Boston Celtics defense was that damn good. Then after that, they have to go and match up with the guy that everybody is saying the consistent best player in the game right now. The most dominant players are Shaquille O'Neal, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and granted the Bucs didn't have Chris Middleton. He makes the series totally different, but that's out of the Boston Celtics control. And they play phenomenal defense on Giannis. Giannis, being who he is, the best player in the game, made things happen. He made it close. He gave him all he could handle. But when you look at it statistically, he never shot the ball great. He didn't look his best. And the Bucs fought very hard and took him to six. But the Boston Celtics locked that ass up. Jimmy Butler and, 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 and the Miami Heat gave him all that he had in this series. Um, just that will. Jimmy Butler really came. But you see, man. You're, you see in certain games, the Boston Celtics made the Miami Heat look extremely silly. This is one. This is like a crazy series that if you look at it from box score and numbers, it's like, damn, this game really, this went really won seven. When you see some of the wins the Celtics had, it's like, this really went seven. Um, And I'm excited. I'm super excited because I, I look at Jason Tatum. They, all of these guys are totally different players, but role in the organization. I look at Jason Tatum as the face. He's the guy that's most likely on his Boston Celtic team that would win the MVP. His jersey's going to be so he might retire as a Celtic. You know what I mean? He's probably he's the guy that probably will have his jersey up in the rafters as number zero. He's your Steph Curry. Jalen Brown is his sidekick. It's his Robin to the Batman. He's your Klay Thompson. The guy that's always going to be a little underrated because he's playing with that superstar guy. But real fans really appreciate and know his value. Some games when the face isn't at his best, Robin might might come and save the day. Game six, Clay, Jalen Brown. Some nights we've seen outperform Jason Tatum when he need a little bit of help. You can you can trust on your little your, your sidekick or your brother to come through and save the day for you. Yeah, he's your Clay Thompson. Then you look at a guy like Marcus Smart, the heart, the soul. He's always in everything. He's the he's the pit bull. Arr, he'll get the technical foul. He'll give the hard foul. He's willing to take a charge. He's going to hold them accountable like we seen earlier in the year when they were at their struggles. Hey, Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, we know they can score. They got to pass the damn ball. That's the same thing Draymond does. Very Draymondish. So I love that they're going to be playing the Golden State Warriors. You look at Ime Udoa, his first year with the Celtics as a head coach going to the finals. Reminds you of Steve Kerr. This is going, I'm very excited. There's some parallels. All of these names that I'm naming, they're totally different people. They're totally different players. But there are some parallels here that has me super excited, man. Steve Kerr is a totally different coach from Ime Udoa. Ime Udoa changed his team defensively. Kerr went over there. They do their, they do their thing defensively. Got to give Golden State their credit defensively. But he changed them offensively. When you look at how they play with Mark Jackson versus Steve, the offense was different. So very di- Clay is Steph is obviously different from Tatum. Tatum is a six eight wing, who who has a bag and is doing step backs and mid range. Curry changed the game with three point shot. Totally different. Clay is a marksman. Jalen Brown is getting his own shots and defend. You know what I mean? There's some par- There's just some parallels and similarities. That's why I don't want anybody to misconstrue anything. I'm super excited. This is incredible. I'm happy for the Celtics. I'm happy for the Heat. I believe in Pat Riley. I can't wait to see what the moves that they make this offseason and become a better team and have to play this team potentially again, the Celtics, next year uh, because they're going to be a team to reckon with over the next few years. Rookie head coach going to the finals. Phenomenal. 
I'm on cloud nine. Damn near cloud 10. I cannot wait for the NBA Finals to start. I think I heard somebody saying the party it starts Wednesday. Oh, man, we about to have a wild ride. Um, I hope y'all loved it. Give me y'all thoughts. Give me y'all reaction. I know some of y'all in my fan base and my, my subscribers are Miami Heat fan. Do not hold y'all head. Y'all fought as hard as y'all can. I know a lot of y'all are also Boston Celtic fans. I want to know how y'all feel. I want to know y'all thoughts. Um, if there's anything I left out in this game, I said a lot. Let me know um, how y'all feel about them parallels. I, I don't, I've never heard nobody else draw those parallels. Um, I'm probably the first to point them out. We probably hear a bunch of them um, in the next couple of days. Uh, but yeah, reactions. I am Pee Wee the Plug. This is NBA Weekly. I'm excited. We headed to the NBA Finals. Congratulations, Boston Celtics. I'm out.